everybody. It is uh, Tuesday, May 30th. We're here at Golden Court in Hadley, Massachusetts. And this is the regularly scheduled meeting of the Hadley Housing Authority. Um, I'm David Moskin. I'm the uh, vice chair uh, who is going to serve as the chair just for running through this agenda today. And I I guess we'll bring up the election of officers at the end of the agenda. Is that appropriate, guys? Or doesn't it have to be on the agenda for us to vote? It's not on the agenda, huh? Oh. Dang it. Oops. Okay. Uh, You're gonna be stuck doing one more meeting. Say it again. You're gonna be stuck doing one more meeting. Or at the beginning of the next meeting. All right. So we're gonna table the officers' appointment if there's no objection. And at the next meeting, that'll be the first item on the agenda. You got that, Pam? All right. I don't know if I'm speaking loudly enough for it. Okay. Do that. All right. So, guys, I don't do, usually do this, so please be patient with me. The first item is changes to the regular meeting. Any agenda items that were not reasonably anticipated 48 hours in advance of the meeting. Reese. Well, there wasn't one anticipated last meeting, but it somehow did not make it on to this agenda. And that is uh, on page four of the minutes, I had asked and it was agreed that uh, we would put proce procedural question on abstentions and acceptable reasons for abstaining on the agenda today. But it somehow didn't make it on there. Okay, so under commissioner's discussion, we're going to add uh, the rules on abstaining from voting as a commissioner. Okay, thanks, Reese. Anything else, guys? All right. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Harry. I'd like to take that item out of order under commissioner's discussion because it may have a bearing on how I vote. So I'd like to hear the reasons Any why they were okay. in Fair enough. Any objections? I don't want to wait till the end of the meeting to hear. I understand. Any objection to discussing the abstention rule now? I heard no objection. Go for it, Harry. Well, well I want to hear what the rules are. Who would like to address this? What I was mean? the one that asked oh, for... Oh, thank you, Reese. Okay, great. Yeah, I, I asked for this uh, item to be placed on the agenda because, and we had discussed this before at previous meetings, uh, I had asked the attorneys... Um, at uh, Mass Nauro conference in November, and again at the April meeting um, of Mass Nauro, if uh, what are what are the uh, procedural uh, the acceptable acceptable procedural reasons for abstaining? And I've now been told twice that uh, because we are a housing authority, because we're a board of commissioners with fiduciary responsibility for the, the entity called Hadley Housing Authority, there are only two reasons for abstaining. In other boards and committees, et cetera, that don't have a fiduciary responsibility, and again, that's legal and financial, a commissioner might be able to abstain, for instance, from to, because they want to make an, a point or they don't want people to know that they agree or disagree with a certain thing that's popular or unpopular. However, for uh, housing authorities, uh, board of commissioners throughout the state, uh, there are only two reasons. One is if, and this happened for you, David, too, because you, you came on the board, I think it was December 27th or something. Okay. Yeah. But um, you hadn't, you were unable to vote on certain things because you hadn't heard the discussion because you weren't on the board before. Right. And that is an acceptable reason for abstaining. If you are a commissioner who for some reason wasn't on the board before, or you weren't on the board before, or you weren't able to make the previous meeting, then you cannot vote on an item that will be voted on, say, for instance, in this meeting. The second reason is if you have a conflict of interest slash perceived conflict of interest. So 
Those are the only two reasons, and you have to state those two reasons as why you are abstaining. You can't just abstain for any reason. So we all, as Board of Commissioners, need to understand that. We cannot, we cannot abstain because of our legal, financial, fiduciary responsibility to the Housing Authority. Thank you. Um, any other comments on that? I'm going to ask Pamela to see if you I'm going to ask Pamela to see if you could get us the written rules about this. So if anybody questions us, we can show them. It what should the, be in your open meeting law training that you all took. Was You mean in, the online thing that we yeah, did? Yeah, it's all in there. But I can get that for the next meeting. I don't have it now. Could you just but, get that page? Because um, going through that five-hour training would be uh, nobody's going to do that. So uh, that would be helpful. Okay. If, not a problem. I, I believe it's also in the Board of Commissioner training. Yeah. Okay. But we have no written... The trainings involved no uh, written, we were never handed like a booklet or a pamphlet on how to be a good commissioner or a proper commissioner. It was just the computer stuff, which- I thought the slides were actually in your binder. They are. I put the, I put they, the slides so, in the binder. The, uh, and also the Board of Commissioner training manual is online and available to okay. read. All right. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I can go back and- sift through all that if that's what it takes but if, if it's easy for you to find that abstention rule that would be good harry any other comment anybody else so comment on that? not having a comfortable uh feeling about the financial uh, ongoings over the last number of years is not a reason for an abstention no okay that's all i need to know thank okay. you thank you Reese. um The approval of minutes from our last meeting, that's April 25th meeting. Has everybody had a chance to run through the minutes from April 25th? Yes. Does anybody have any corrections or comments? Yeah, I do. Okay, well, I'll let Reach go first, if you'll forgive me. Help me. Well, help me, help me out here, Sue, because two heads are better than one. So on, uh, uh, let's see where we are. On page two, uh, toward the bottom, I think most everybody would put an N before the O where it says no one is perfect. And that was a, a quote uh, from Gary DePace. So it just has a little lowercase O, but it should read capital N O. Thank you. Is that it? Oh, okay. Um, let's see. Oh, and yes, um, uh, at the very the the first page, the very first paragraph where it talks about people are present, it says, Risa Smith Freed, member, I'm the treasurer. So the, the officers are noted on the on the list. So the office they hold. Uh let's see. We've already addressed the abstention and the narrow conference. Okay. I think that's a question. Yeah, Sue? Yes, I think that um, where it says that Reese Freed announced at eleven oh five that that Harry Chadwick was came in late, and that David Moskin stepped away for the meeting. I think little petty minutiae things like that should be taken out of the minutes. May because I it's address that. Yeah, that's no. I'm just uh, I'm just telling. Let her finish up. Oh, I think sure. that it's so you know that it's not pertinent to all the things that we have as far as mm. housing business. As far as uh, Gary DePace goes, um, we weren't aware that Gary DePace was going to be attending the last meeting. It wasn't on the agenda that the accountant was going to be here to begin with. And um, I don't understand this part where it says the Amherst Housing Authority making sure that Hadley is getting his fair share of revenue from Amherst. Gary DePace explained that the guidelines are being followed. But John said that the guidelines need to be changed considering we are three housing authorities. I'd like a little bit more explanation about that part. Um, well, in the next page, where there's a mistake where it said, John Allen asked Gary DePace to speak to the internal controls, which allowed a former commissioner to sign the check. It wasn't a former commissioner. It was the executive director that signed the checks. 
No. So that needs to be corrected. No. No. Why is that? It's not the case. It says a former commissioner. That's right. It was a former commissioner. But may I, David? No. Um, let me finish right. oh, first. Okay. Um, yeah. Let me see. I think that we, I, I would like to bring up the late fee situation again, since I'm new and this is, is my very the, first meeting. Is that part of the minutes here? It's part of the minutes that they, that it, you know, you voted. I, uh, I would like to bring it up at another meeting to, to re look at the fact that about these late fees, because we brought this late fees up at so many meetings. Is there a correction to the minutes? Sue? It says, uh, well, we talked about the late fees and they, the payment, they don't want to have late fees past the 5th, it says here. Harry Chadwick spoke up and would like the subcommittee to reconsider the payment of, of date beyond the 5th of the month. It was voted on, but I think it has to be reconsidered, mm -hmm. considering the fact that we brought up this $25 late fee for so many meetings, even before All right, that's, uh, we were the, the board that's, that's here fine. now. That's good, Sue. Let's just bring that up under the commissioner's discussion. Because it's not actually a yeah, correction just or anything. Saying, That's good. Right. Um, let me see. I guess that is, I guess that's it. Right, thank you. Reese, did you have a comment? Yeah. Uh, yes. Um, so uh, when the meeting is being conducted, Sue, um, people that aren't present, have to be it, a, a commissioner who is not actually physically present at the meeting. It is required that it is noted. It is not petty. It is so that if uh, a commissioner is absent for a discussion or a vote that or information being provided, that it is noted that that commissioner was not in. It is actually required. So it sounds petty, but it's required. It's a five-minute time period. If someone was a half an hour late, we always waited five or ten minutes till we didn't start always exactly the, at, the, at the, the time. The problem is the meeting starts at a certain time. If a commissioner is not present, it is required to be noted because we have no idea how long that commissioner is not going to be present. That's why it's noted when they uh, uh, when they come in. When they leave, when they come back in, it must be noted on the minutes. All right. So um, I guess solutions to this discussion include showing up on time for meetings and being present at the table for votes. And uh, the recordings of the, meet of the meetings, if they, they have to be very careful to record who is voting and who is not. I think that's... That's it. Okay. And who is present for discussions and who is not. And that's right. Yeah. That's fine, too. All right. Uh, okay, so any other comments on the minutes? There were several other things that Sue brought up that it would be helpful to take one by one so we can correct any. All right, Sue, why don't you back I this up and let's take one by one. Well, we could do it at another meeting since I'm new. I don't want to hold. I mean, it's a please let let's get it off the table. Okay, so why? So I can start saying about why was the fee? Why was the accountant here, and that the board members weren't aware of it? Well, because about that I'm not having you be the answer. I mean, I like everybody to, may I to join in. Um, okay, are you the one that knows why the accountant was here? Uh, uh, no, I mean, may so why it wasn't on the agenda, and why? No, because. This particular body has, uh, several members of this body have said that the treasurer report is Gary DePace's report. He didn't have to be noted as being on the agenda because he is, quote, the treasurer report. Okay. But it's only common courtesy to let the people know that are present at the meeting that he was going to show up. I think what happened was is we didn't know if he would be able to come, but he came because it was quarterlies. So he was helping to explain the quarter. But it still doesn't we're we'll still make not sure that all guests that it was not mentioned. We'll put it on the agenda right. next time. Okay. Anything else? Anything Thank else? you.
That's good. No, it's good to know before um, Gary comes in. I think that's helpful because we might have other questions. Uh, was there anything else? Uh, Getting back to this $25 late fee, we could we put it on the agenda for next month to revisit this? So can, can I answer that? So we've had it on the agenda. We had a subcommittee. Um, the, it's never a $25 late fee is not applied at the uh, fifth day. It By law, it's on after 30 days. And that was explained. So there was confusion but it has as to when it was, right. when it's. So it's it just the idea that we know tenants here have had it applied. That's, that's correct. And it's been applied correctly. It's in your lease. It's in the policy. It's been in the policy for decades. But we this, never enacted it until three or four months ago, even though it's been in. That's not months. true. We enacted it last May. We talked about it. You and I talked about it. And it was, I showed it to you in your lease. I also provided the board with copies of the HCD PHNs, which are public housing notices that show um, when it was stopped during the pandemic, when it was allowed to start up again, and when it was allowed to start up again, we implemented it. Okay, I don't know if that satisfies you or not. Reese, comment? Yes. Um, it, it, the, the conversation occurred during the policy and procedure uh, section, and Rich and I were the subcommittee. We recommended that the template provided by DHCD be followed. It includes the rent collection policy um, and... It was approved by the Board of Commissioners last meeting. So I'm not sure why at this short juncture we would want to open up that again when we have discussed it over and over and over again. We really must follow the um, lease and the policy and procedure for rent collection. These are all templates from DHCD and we need to follow them. So um, later, Judy, once again, maybe would it help to have whatever has been written down or has existed in DHCD's documents in front of us so we can see once again, necessary, what DHCD policies are and, and the discussion on where the $25 fee is coming from and if it's been applied properly or not. You've shown the tenants that nobody's being charged this fee inappropriately, right? Correct. Right. Nope. And you want that? There's still that's discussion true. about it. I would like to speak to that. So, um, I'm just, yeah. I Sorry. would like to speak to Wait, that. That is not accurate, what the executive director is saying, because there was a tenant that presented for a rent roll showing that late fees were paid, were uh, put on her account on the first day of the following month after receiving. Uh, the payment. She provided statements that I looked at on November 1st, the rent is due by the 30th. It had been paid depending on where in the month and a late fee was applied on December 1st. I was told by Mary Billion that because there was an outstanding balance that that's why late fees were putting on there. But a $4 and whatever it was outstanding balance does not warrant a $25 late fee when the rent for November was paid on the 1st received by the 30th and the late fee was put on December 1st. So I don't know if this is the place to do it, but that record that I looked at is not accurate in terms of having late fees put on it. And I would like to make a motion that that record be cleaned up and those late fees be removed from that tenant's record. A, a commissioner cannot do that. You shouldn't be looking at her rent roll. I stand she brought it here to the meeting, excuse me. Right, she, brought I, it she here did. To the and we told you at that point too, that you that's above and beyond. You're not supposed to do that. So it, well, I who's absolutely, gonna handle it, Pamela. I'm going to handle it, and the judge is going to handle it in housing court. That's where it's going to get handled, and it was 100 percent taken care of properly. If you go back far enough on the ledger, there's other issues. So that's why there, and it's 100 percent being handled properly. And if it's not, then the judge will find that out, and then the judge will rule in the tenant's favor, paying the the tenant back any kind of money that they. We would have to pay back any kind of money that was wrongly taken. But it's up for a judge, not for a commissioner or commissioners. Okay. 
So this, this matter would have to go before a judge as opposed to the administration handling our own affairs here with our own tenants. Tenant I sensitivity. Am, I am handling. Tenant sensitivity yep. as opposed to dragging them into court so a judge can rule whether that was legitimate or not. Legitimate. That's not the only reason they would okay. go to court. That's not the only reason they go to court. Fine. Thank you. Can I speak again? Yes, sir. Just the fact that tenants are feeling uncomfortable about this twenty-five dollar. There's two tenants fee. feeling uncomfortable. No, that's not it's true. It actually is. Tenants are feeling uncomfortable. Does not mean that we should not bring it up in another meeting. And and it's not for the board. It's day-to-day -day operations. It's not. But it's for not the board. getting handled correctly. It it is. The tenants just are refusing to to comply with the rules. Okay. So. Uh, the commissioners are not allowed to get involved. Is there a hand up? Oh, it was just that I was just trying to follow the agenda where we are, and I, I was just verifying that we are still just approving the minutes. That's the, the, This is just approving the minutes right now, correct? Right. Uh, yes. That is correct. Yeah. Okay. We're trying to determine whether or not there's any subjects that need to be added to the agenda in an upcoming meeting. So... Um, I guess we're going to leave that alone then. Anything else on the minutes? Uh, commissioners are welcome to put to ask to put anything on the agenda for any meeting, including things that we may be told we may not discuss. So we can work that out well before the upcoming meeting. And if we're going too much into the daily operations of the authority, we will be instructed to leave that item off or not discuss it. Uh, Mark, are we on to? We have to. OK, thank you. So I'll ask for a vote to approve the minutes. Uh, all those in favor of approving these minutes with corrections? Hold on, David. Sorry. David, we need a motion and a second, and then a vote. Thank you for reminding me. It's I move that we. Uh, Vote on approval of the minutes. So I have a motion to approve the minutes. Do I have a second? Second. Second? Yep. Richie, yes. Any discussion? Further discussion? If not, a motion just to approve these minutes as corrected. If in favor, raise your hand or say yes. 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 I'll yes. say yes. No. 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 She needs, she needs okay. something. You, you, you just abstain. You actually abstain. Abstain this time, Sue, because you were a, a technically a board uh, member last month. So you would just abstain. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, Pam, I assume you got that vote. Thank you. Um, Harry didn't vote. I voted no because I'd like okay. to see how they were amended before I would approve them. So I'm voting no if they're being accepted now. Uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to rewrite the minutes or amend the minutes on the fly here. I don't know the rules about that. We generally in the past have tabled them, and then the changes have been made, and then we vote them. However, but if you're changing that, I'm voting no. Uh, David, you already specified as amended and corrected. We've yeah. already discussed the corrections and the amendments. But Harry's uh, making a good point. We don't have a written amended version of this, so... Uh, Hate to get in the weeds on this kind of stuff, but Harry, would should we have a written? Do you know? Should we have a written amendment version? My my no written. does not affect the vote. You already have three votes, so you don't have to worry about my no vote. I just want to be recorded as no vote. Hmm? We do have three votes. We have a quorum. Yeah. Correct. Okay, but for the record, a written <clears throat> amended version will be filed, right? Yes. Somehow. Pam, you're in charge of filing the minutes, is that right? Yes. So are you able, from our discussion today, amend the current minutes? I will sense read my notes, and then I also watch back the video okay. as I'm doing the notes. Thank you. Do you feel like we should um, look at your written amended minutes from last month's That's meeting? That's up to the board. Um, we do have a majority vote already, and they do get amended before they will go in the book. All right, we'll leave that alone for now. Um, warrant reports. Warrant reports. 
Reese, are you taking this as a treasure? How do we do the warrant reports? Yeah, Reese. They've been reviewed and uh, reconciled and yes. approved, and yes. checks have been signed. I don't know what else to say about that. Yes. Um, Carrie and I meet every two weeks. We go through the warrant reports. We go through all the checks, the invoices. There was nothing unusual but for two things. Uh, so one of them is uh, the water bill, and I made a note for uh, Mr. Budrick to to review. We have a astonishingly high water bill for Building Seven. Uh, so maybe Bruce, later you could tell us what you found, or or just tell us, Bruce. Uh, we have a, I have a work order in for it right now, so we do not know what's causing it yet. Okay. So we have to notify the tenants will be coming in. But I do have a work order created for it to look into it. Okay. That's all I have. Great. And the, the second thing that was highly unusual uh, was generated by the actions of this board, unfortunately. Uh, so when we changed from uh, uh, our accountant paying the bills as they come in, which provided timely payment for our vendors. Uh, we ended up getting a late fee and an interest uh, charge. I believe it was something like $52 for late payment. And that's what happens when we do not pay these invoices upon receipt like we always have, like the housing authority always has before. So, um, Carrie was going to try to talk the vendor out of the late fee and the the interest rate um, or the interest payment, but we're going to keep having these situations. And I think it's very bad practice for us to delay payment of invoices uh, because it's going to generate these problems where we're incurring expenses we had never incurred before, but late fees and interest payments. Thank you, Reese. So this goes to the topic that's come up. I was here for a couple of meetings where the, uh, certain board members had discomfort with sending out checks, paying, paying bills that hadn't been reviewed, right? So we wondered, we looked for a solution to how to review the bills that were due and approve them and then send out checks. And I wonder, Carrie, I'll turn to you. Is there not a way that the handful of bills, invoices that you have to pay could be presented to the commissioners and not make you wait for weeks to get the checks out? Could that be done electronically? So I imagine there's two or three or four vendors that want to get paid very promptly. Is there a way to get those few vendors' invoices out for approval to the commissioners electronically so you don't have to wait till the next board meeting or or uh, get the commissioners to show up to sign the checks? Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So we pay the accounts payable. Um, so what happened in the situation was they, um, I pay on, I pay them on Thursday. I have everything I, I pay everything I have. This invoice probably came in Thursday afternoon, and it waited two weeks to be paid. Um, but what we're doing now is we're going, you know, I'm meeting with Risa every two weeks, um, and. Honestly, I would love to be able to go back. I mean, I can I can absolutely send them electronically if you'd like, but I would love to go back to the electronic signatures and um, you improving the warrant. Mm -hmm. So, yes, you could get out the warrants that need to be paid quickly electronically and get a response from the board or at least three of us to approve payment. And then well, that, every other Thursday, Reese would show up to sign the checks. No. And you would prefer to have it done automatically. Yeah, I want it, I can't send them to all three of you, um, three individuals, but I could send Risa electronically the invoices. She could approve them. Um, and I could print the checks right then and mail them. So I want to have to meet with you personally for the signatures. 
I'm not sure I heard all that. Sorry, my hearing's not That's great. Right. So, so you could send out the, the invoices, the warrant art, art, yes. for, for, for approval. Yep. And she can review them yeah. and send them back and say, I'm good to go. And then I can um, print the checks out with the signatures already on it and get them in the mail faster. So I'll ask the board then for a motion to approve. Um, uh, put, Pamela, oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Point of order. As much as it would really help us, it's not on the agenda, and it should be on the agenda in order for us to, to okay. vote for it. So if we could put it on the agenda for next meeting, I it would help everybody. But okay. It's just. All right. So, uh, Reese, that means you would be, just to finish this up, you would be responsible for, uh, if you're still treasurer, approving the invoices for payment and i, th I we, thought we need a quorum for that mr chairman no we need a it's no. already been done so at previous meetings i'm the treasurer but i thought that the quorum has to look at the checks before the no. paid no how i don't understand how one board member could have that because it's the board member elected as treasurer but that's giving you full power over the, what is being sent out that is correct. aside but i don't agree with that unless there's some a written policy yeah, i'd we, like to see we would still be reviewing right. all the warrants exactly which that the board way. still has to approve but, but which when she takes her trip to mexico what david it's, uh, is explaining is before the board changed the way this was done carrie would send would, would get an invoice and immediately pay it and the and the board objected to that that they were signing and saying it was okay after the bill was already paid. Right, because there's enough um, there's enough checks and balances in place with the AUP and the audits to take care of anything that might come up. Even when we had and, and this is just trying to explain to Sue what what has happened. So what prompted this was we had a situation uh, where. There was one invoice that a vendor had a new cler clerical person plus had new billing software and it kerfuffled the invoice. So, so there were two different rates on the hourly billing, you know, the, what the vendor charged. And it didn't get caught yet. It would have been caught, but that helped prompt the board to say, maybe we need more eyes to check this out. So if we go back, David, slightly different than what you're saying, but if we go back to how we did it before, acknowledging that there's a way to, you know, there's audit processes, there's, there's what Carrie does, uh, the department head looks at it, Pamela looks at it, and Gary DePace looks at it, plus in the audits that are required by DHCD, it would have been caught. So if we go back to the way we did it before, it can decrease the amount of staff and accounting time spent on this exercise. And it will decrease the amount of commissioner time spent focusing on this issue. Mr. Chairman, I disagree with that. I don't, I think we should go back to the old way. And if we have to vote on it in the next meeting, we will because of the fact I feel that one person on the board should not be able to make the decision to mm -hmm. say that this particular check that was cut is okay without all, I know in the past, I've been here 20 years, all the board members have always looked at what, had, what went out. So I would just ask again, if we do head towards uh, what Sue's talking about. So when I was a selectman and when I was a library trustee, yes, there was a list of all the warrants on top, and uh, it took a majority of the sitting board to approve before the checks went out. I think that's where Sue's going but back to that traditional type of thing. Um, is there an electronic way of getting us the invoice list, the warrant, ahead of time? So we can all look at it and approve it. Maybe even let you know electronically that it's approved. Anyway, I don't need an answer today. But I'm sorry. It would be an open meeting law violation because exactly. you'd be having a meeting through email. Yeah. So I you send it to that. the treasurer because the treasurer is responsible for approving them. 
but, but I can't send it to everybody. I, I would suggest that we just put this on the agenda for next next meeting and we talk about it then. Sure. What okay. would you have call it? What would you call it? Um, it's probably uh, uh, AP, uh, accounts payable policy. Accounts we'll payable policy? Yeah. This is all public record, right? All, every bill we pay, mm -hmm. yes. every record, every invoice is yep. all public mm -hmm. record. Um, okay, so is there any other treasurer's report that we deal with at these meetings did, did, besides the warrants? Did we get an uh, approval on the warrant? We need to vote and I'll for the date and with the... Okay, I'll ask for a vote in a minute and a motion. Uh, With the total. I'll ask for a motion to approve the warrants from the last month. Uh, we have two oh. months worth of warrants. Two months? Um, yeah. Is it three? All right. So we have warrants from 518. Oh, yeah. Three months. Sorry. Let us run. This is right. It says 518 to 518. Is that how you do it? Why is it only? We have three months of warrants to approve, I believe. 518 to 518, 54 to 54. That's well, because that's how the computer generates the donates. So, and um, April 20th. So I'm going to ask a question myself. Why, why does it not list the full month that the warrants are for? Okay. So again, we pay um, the accounts payable every other week. So it's not three months; it's three. Um, three weeks. Warrants. Sorry about that. It's three warrants. So four twenty would be your first warrant that we paid when we had the meeting. <clears throat> excuse me, last month. Um, this hadn't been paid yet. So we had the four twenty, and then two weeks later is the five four, and then two weeks later is the five eighteen. So why does the software say 420 to 420 as if it was all happening in one day? It, it does all happen in one day. It's the day I run the report and cut the chips. Remember, we're meeting every two weeks. Yeah, but it says transactions. So yeah. that doesn't mean the business transaction. That means the act of paying the bill. Yes. Yes. I still want Your business, yeah, I mean, the invoice date is listed in the first column. All right. Okay, so that's just the day that these are being paid. All right, thank you. It's the date of the checks. All right. So should I ask for a motion then for the transaction listed 420 to 420? I move that we... 54 to 54 and 518 to 518. Maybe we can get them all done at the same time. I'll have a motion for those three payment days, please. I move that... Yep. Well, we have to move. A motion. Yep. Yeah. So I move <clears throat> that we... Uh, vote on the warrant report with invoices for 518, 54, and 420. Do I have a second? Second. Any other discussion? Uh, yes. I can, Pamela, please, sorry. can we add, um, we need to add the dollar amount for each okay. date because that, that's the audit auditor compares that to okay. make sure that that dollar amount and that warrant are, is the one that was paid. Okay. So for 420, you want me to just, yes. Uh, it's $24,453.52. For 5-4, it's $5,777.07. And for 5-18, it's $18,818.66. Okay. I move that we take just exactly what Pamela said <laughs> as part of our approval of the warrants. I have a question on the April one then. Yes, approved, just, uh, Harry. And we haven't got to the treasurer's report yet, but yep. the uh, end of April balance is um, $22,000 less, but we're paying $24,000 worth of bills. Where did the additional $2,000 come from on the uh, checking account and the bills were being paid? The numbers aren't making sense because $24,000 worth of bills and the bank balance has gone down only by $22,000. Where did we pay the extra $2,000 from? What account? That's the revolving fund. So money comes in, came in during the month as well, too. That's just the ending balance. So the, ten, the tenant rents go into that and the subsidy goes into that and bills come out. So how do we know how much money has come in from the tenant rents? We, we don't get a, a that's in, that. that uh, it's on your TAR report. 
shows you what the tenant report uh, rents were for the month. What the rent roll is. So I have to go to that report to see what the numbers are before I go back to the treasury. Yep. And it's, and it's also in here as well, in your line item, book, the expense of uh, income and expense. Okay. All right, uh, would we have a motion or a second? Is that what things are right now? Yes, Rich seconded. All right, so we're trying to approve the three periods of uh, invoices. We have a motion or a second. I'll ask again if there's any other discussion. If not, uh, vote to approve. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes three, two. I can't move. So that's right. And I cannot abstain, so I vote no. Okay. Um, so, you, so you can vote because it's being presented to you. It was just that you weren't on the board for the minutes, but you can vote for this. Yes or no? How about if I don't? I don't know because my first. I don't feel comfortable voting because I'm not familiar yet. So how do I? You can vote no. I think you can vote. Well, no, no, you can abstain because you don't feel comfortable yet. You weren't here previously. No, I don't understand financial. I have nothing, so I will abstain from. This. Okay, you can. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to suggest here a little bit off topic, but Pamela, if you're willing, if you, maybe you and Gary, I don't know, would like to sit down with any of, you know, we have four sure. new, fairly new, three mm -hmm. brand new. Anyway, there's some commissioners that don't know the finances as well as we should. Sure. Would you be willing to set up a meeting with Gary and Absolutely. just sit with us for an hour maybe and yep. go through what everything means and how it all interacts with each other? Absolutely. Reese? Yeah. There is also a training offered, uh, by Mass Narrow, specifically for and only for Board of Commissioners um, about finances as part of their certification training. How do we find that? Uh, you just go to Mass Narrow. Uh, uh, .org. I, I .org. Can, Pamela can hook you up with the, the requisite passwords and all this kind of stuff. Okay. And it, it it's what I did, so I would learn more about. Plus, Carrie's tutelage was brilliant. Oh, so Carrie, you should probably be there too if we have a in-person meeting. All you right. know, I mean, frankly, Carrie can very well explain to anyone how this works. I'll leave that up to Pamela yeah. to assign whoever she'd like to assign to that. I myself don't learn that well from trainings online. Um, I remember them for a little while, and then a, a week or two or three later, I find I have a hard time remembering. Uh, what I was told. So maybe an in-person meeting would be helpful for everyone to take our notes, work at our own pace. That sound reasonable, Pamela? Is that a pain in the neck? Nope, not at all. Maybe it should yep, just be Gary and Carrie. I don't know. Yep. Okay. Uh, so do we have a separate treasure report? Or yeah, is that the... Um, that's here. Is that what we have here? The two yep. pages? Okay. All right. Me? Okay. So, so yeah, please. usually Carrie does this for me, but uh, there's nothing unusual. I think we've already gone through this. This was prepared by uh, Gary DePace, the Treasury's report uh, dated April 30th. And there's nothing unusual. So right, no unusual expenses or anything. Bruce, I assume you look at every item on the warrants since almost all of them relate to maintenance and uh, repair and stuff. Not every item, but every item that deals with facilities comes comes to me. It's put in my box, okay. and then I review um, those items. If I have questions, I'll ask my maintenance supervisor or someone else all before right. I approve it, which does happen sometimes. I'm like, what is this? Why are we paying this? Um, and I need to understand it before I approve it. Then I initial it, and anything that deals with my department, I do approve Okay, so if somebody slipped in a hotel bill from Las Vegas. Um, who would catch that? Well, if it was on, if it was on my, if it was on something to do with facilities, and I saw that, I would catch that. Okay. Otherwise, Carrie, you would be the one who would catch caught that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I'm kind of being facetious here, but uh, I think the department head, whoever department head, yeah. for, that it comes under their budget, they're gonna go. Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't know how the department head structure works here. So, uh, uh, David. I would hope so. I just did. I do want to point out the laundry. Um, so we are now paid off the equipment. Yes. And we're starting to save money again. 
so that's new. If you look down at the laundry balance, uh-huh. it has the that new equipment has been paid off, See? and now the money is going back Isn't into the account. And how much does that bring in every week or every month? Every month, about, it's about three four hundred a month. Yeah. Three or four hundred dollars a month. Yeah. 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 Great. Is there but something? We don't get to keep all of that. We only yeah. keep half of it. Who gets the other half? The HCD. It's for the utility to offset the utilities. Really? Yeah. Okay. And is there something targeted already to use on? Or that's something what? targeted. Is there already something budgeted for the upcoming future laundry money to pay for? More okay, laundry. So there's um, $110 in there. <laughs> yeah, it's not. No, no, but in a couple of months you're going to have. So it would be any kind of uh, fees to have the equipment um, maintained, repaired, new equipment. Um, so it all stays in the world of laundry. Yeah. Yes. It really does. Mr. Chairman. Yes. I just wanted to note that we've asked numerous times at different meetings for that list still of what laundry monies can be used for. Gary DePace, when we met at the Senior Center, said there is a list. We've asked you for a list, Pamela, and we hope to get this list, and, and not just a list from you, but a list that might come from DHCD or somewhere to say, because I've been to many, many meetings, and we've never heard till recently that laundry money can be used for utilities. That's something brand new. So no, it Amherst, has to. No, no. As Amherst took us over. Before, it was no, only, no. we were told no. as tenants over and over that it could only be used for laundry. That is so not whether it be had a written clarification about this. Okay. okay. Thanks. 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 So in the budget guidelines, it it clearly outlines that the half of the money has to go to utilities. Part yes. of excuse me, yeah. part of our part of our subsidy from DHCD covers utilities, so they expect us to pay that back. So it's it's a budget guideline. I understand we that, but we've yet to see it in writing, and I, we've asked numerous times. Could you provide that at the next mm -hmm. meeting in writing, not just from you, but from DHCD, talking about the guidelines and what the budget, can the we budget use? guidelines? They have been provided to the board. Yeah. Did you get your board finder too? Yes. From, Mr. Allen gave it to you directly. Yes. Okay. It's in there. It's the mm -hmm. budget guidelines are in there. No. That'll. Now it, does it specifically sorry. say what laundry money is going to be does. used for? Yes, okay. it does. Absolutely. Right. Okay. We all have to go look at that. Lisa, you want to add something? Yeah, I just wanted to say, um, just for all of us, uh, public housing notices is a wealth of information. So if, if there's something that comes up, like you're going, well, what's the answer to that? You can look at public housing notices uh, right there on the website for DHCD and find just about anything you're looking for. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Reese. All right, so any other, do we vote to accept the treasurer's report? I move that, that we vote. Okay. To accept I, the treasurer's report. Uh, I have a motion to accept the treasurer's report of April 30th, 2023, which is second. Any discussion on that? If not, do we all, all those in favor of accepting the treasurer's report for April 30th, 2023, vote yes? Yes. All those. Vote no, don't. No. Abstain. One abstain. Sue's going to abstain. So three yes, one no, one abstention. Okay, moving on to property manager's report. Bruce. No, that's, Is that Bruce? that's Mary. <laughs> that would be Mary. Oh, sorry, Mary. That's all right. So the vacancy report um, shows that we have three vacancies here in Golden Court and Two over at Brookway. Um, since this report on April 30th, we have had an update, which is um, we have leased up one of the Brookway. So we have a new family over at Brookway. So that's a that's a good positive thing on that. And on the accounts receivable report, um, we have to work hard on collecting rent. We have quite a few outstanding rents that um, that we're going to be um, working with tenants to set up some payment agreements um, and working hard on collecting rents. We have quite a few people who owe money and we're gonna have to start. So when I, uh, may I ask a question? Mary? Yes. So when I see a number of uh, 13,678 under one category for the April rents. Yes. Is that all people that it have until May 30th to pay yeah. the April rent? Yeah. So you hope to get a lot of money in, in the next two days or am I missing something? No. So 
that's that thirteen thousand six seventy eight is the total amount of rent charge in the month. Oh, of April. okay, I see, I see. Um, and then you would go to see the payments. That's how much in April we collected, and then the April balance is how much is still outstanding. Wow. Yeah. 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 So there's quite a few um, that we really have to we have to. Um, and then the same with the 705s is the same. So we really have to knock on them. 705s have been, um, they're not so bad because we have worked with the families and they have applied for RAPT funding and received that. So um, got a, their nose to the grindstone here, I believe. So so that's it. You don't have to vote on this report no. or ask it. If you have questions, you can ask. Yeah. Is there anything uh, regarding policies that you think should be? You do, and you voted on that, right, the payment policy. So okay. is there any improvements that need to be made to the policies yeah. to encourage payment no, on time? We just have to work on that. And that's sending out letters, sending out late statements, working with people to pay, make payment agreements, sending out 14-day notice, 30-day notices to quit and trying to get these people into court to make court agreements. Uh, because in the courts, the courts have more um, assistance. So they, once you get into the courthouse, there's so many more um, programs and assistance that you can get. Um, and that's something- Very rarely will evict a person for non-payment. But the courts have TTP, they have all these other agencies that come in and help. They won't help until there's an eviction. A notice to quit. Right. Yeah. Okay. So there's nothing more the commissioners can do nothing. to improve the no. payment policy. No, it's just work on me. I need to work harder. You need to work harder, you say? I need to work harder. Okay. Macy, do you want to say something? Yeah, I just wanted to say uh, that is shocking to me. Mm -hmm. Is that more or less the norm? It's more and it's normal for Hadley. Hadley's always had a bad account to receive. Okay. Since I've been here, it stems from a history. Of I think it, I think so. You shouldn't be taking that. It came. It came from a previous director to that too. That th there was a focus on uh, the capital side as opposed to collecting rent. Hadley is our worst um, agency as far as tenant account receivables uh -huh. because the tenants aren't as disciplined in, in yeah. paying. Like before, they all say you never had a twenty-four a twenty-five dollar late fee, mm -hmm. and I didn't have a twenty. When I was executive director, um, we didn't have. Prior to me, Howard Kosky didn't have the $25. I didn't have the $25. And we didn't have the AUP and the PMR. So we didn't have to account for it. We didn't have to report to the HDD on our account receivable. <clears throat> now we do. Now we have to tell the HDD how much we how much rent is owed to us. So okay. So do you keep a spreadsheet? Like we're not looking at any history here. No, I can't give you names. In, in I don't want names. I just wanted a history of the uh, how much is owed every every month or whatever like that. You so, get but, one of these every month. Yeah. So I I should go back and just yeah keep and an eye on your part. So that was my point. Is it's more than it was say three months ago. Okay, and the other comment I have to make is. Um, to reiterate what you said, sometimes the only way to collect past due rent and monies is to issue the tenant a notice to quit. It's the only way yes. that the housing authority and us as well, providing policies and procedures, it's the only way to get the tenant help yes. through the court system because these agencies you're discussing are not accessible to the housing authority staff or the tenants 
until there's a notice to quit. Mr. Right. Chairman? Yeah, thank God. Okay. Mr. Yeah. Chairman. She will not give money out. Yeah. Unless there's a notice to quit. So do you want to ask him? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, um, living here for many years, I know that when people do go to housing court, because I've gone as an advocate for many tenants, that there is not a lot of availability to help tenants. You've got to quick run and grab the lawyer at the day if you're lucky enough to get them. And you're and you're lucky if you get somebody from legal services to represent you. No lawyer in town wants to take a case where they're not going to make any money off a low income tenant. So when you, I think it's misinformation when you're saying that there's a lot of re, uh, protection for tenants and you have to take the mean spirit away of taking them to court. I think that there should be some sort of subgroup here that deals with tenants that are late on the rent and not always look on the legal side and the mean spirited side. It's different, Sue. It's, um, since COVID, since Raft had all that money and was handing it out. Um, it's it's changed a lot in the housing court, especially for your payment. But Raft has only been since COVID. No, Raft has always been. No, I know, but I mean, active in, in paying people's for back sure. rent. And I think, and that's one of the things, as as I was saying, it's not cut and dry. Let's take somebody to court and they're going to get help we, and the, pay their rent. It, it takes a lot for us to issue a 30 day notice. Well, it does. I, Look I, at the I beg to differ. <laughs> They see the balance. Right. Pamela, Pamela, please. So uh, just a couple points of clarification. When Mary is saying that she didn't do a $25, she didn't have a $25 late fee, and Howard Koskin didn't have a $25 late fee. With all due respect, they did. They just didn't oh, enforce did. it. Did. It was there. Were, it was a Hadley policy. It was in the Hadley lease. They didn't enforce it. Um, and Sue, I do take umbrage with your saying it means spirited. Lease enforcement is not mean, mean spirited. We're doing our jobs. It's our jobs to enforce the lease. I understand that. Um, and there is absolutely nine times out of 10, every case that the housing authority has with a tenant, they have community legal aid. We work a lot with community legal aid. We're very lucky in this part of the of Hampshire County, and um, they're now up in Greenfield County, but TPP and community legal aid are absolutely there all the time. Pamela, may I ask, is there anything more we could be doing as an authority to educate tenants as to why it's not worth their while to deal with the notice to, to quit and have to go to court to get the aid that they're looking for? Is If there are solutions, financial solutions that you can have access to before going to the courthouse, are they aware of them or are, do they exist? So it, you, there are the, the new policy that um, the commissioners just you just approved outlines more the steps of rent collection and how rent is ap applied. So that needs to be educated more in uh, people need to be aware of that more in Hadley. Um, we are meeting with people more. I met with a person um, three weeks ago um, that had um, was we were going through the steps with them. And once they understood um, that, you know, once you get into a repayment agreement, nine times out of 10, we do, uh, we'll take off almost all the late fees, except for one, unless it's their first time. But we'll all the way back to one, they get in a repayment agreement. If they got in a repayment agreement right from the beginning, there'd be no late fee. There's just, that, okay. that's up an advantage to it. Um, may, may, let me interrupt just to ask, um, do all the tenants get it? Are there some tenants who, even though you explain it to them for whatever reasons, they don't really understand what their obligations are for um, whatever reasons? There are some tenants that just for whatever reason. And they, then what do we do if a tenant doesn't get it? That's the tenants we end up in court with. Mr. Chairman. Unfortunately. It seems like that. I feel that, you know, that there's a lot of tenants here that are elderly, a lot of dementia. We have people with physical disabilities. <clears throat> And I think that, yes, you have policies to follow. Mm -hmm. But one of the things I'd like to see as a new a board member is the kinder and gentler technique of de dealing with tenants and not deal and always you know, so dealing with I actually, threats of notice. Myself and my staff actually are kinder and gentle people. We have the resident service coordinator. Well, when tenants are, when staff is yelled at and called stupid and dumb and all kinds of derogatory names, 
But I don't think there's most people who live here even know what the support service coordinator. Yeah, of course, does. I'm not sure why. I don't know. I've think. never talked to anybody that even knows what she provides. That's the kind of stuff you don't that think come that out re- it's in the tenant, tenant newspaper. It is in the tenant newspaper, and it mm-hmm. has been. No, but it, it doesn't has. explain what her duties are and what it, she can it, provide. It actually has. It actually has. Maybe we need to do it again or do something. It again. Do it again. It's a point of contention, but yeah. uh, okay, I, I don't. I don't have solutions, but it's yeah. just. It seems very hard to do if you have people who aren't getting it. And, and, or, uh, yeah, choose, get punished. Yeah. Punished. Well, I would like to, to say, in, in, uh, I hear you, Sue. We do have a lot of very elderly folks. We have folks who have difficulty reading and understanding English is not their first language, et cetera. However, I think what Mary and what what uh, Pamela are saying is that some of the agencies that provide enormous support for folks who are struggling with understanding their obligations, the only way to access the that social service and social safety net support is through a notice to quit. And I also have seen that there's agencies that don't require a court order by a judge to to come in who have then come in and helped um, various tenants with various aspects, not just in Massachusetts. Right. Right here. I'm talking about right here at Hadley Housing Authority. We have folks that were in need of of services who have accessed or because of Pamela, Mary, Kendra, who's the resident services coordinator, been able to access services from agencies that don't require a court order to jump into action. And it's been very, very helpful. Okay. Mr. Chair, I just... Actually, I'd like to go first. Yeah, I don't want to... Yeah, Yeah, this program. So, and just the the last thing is, so this program, the 667 program is Golden Court and Berkeley is 705. So 705 is family members, but the 52 uh, residents that live over here, 100% are elderly and disabled. That's what Mm -hmm. our program is. And our program and the rules and the regulations and the policies are written for elderly and disabled people. Mm -hmm. It it just, it's already in the program. That's the vast majority of all of our programs. Emma, let me ask you a question. Do you think that the basic rules and reminder type of message is presented often enough and clearly enough that people who might forget things or um, not get it the first time, like how often does newsletter come out? Once a month. Once a month. Do you think um, that could be a, a constant in the newsletter? Just a reminder, you know, um, what agencies are available and when they're available. Like, you can't reach them to you have to receive your notice to quit. Uh, these might be available before you get your notice to quit. I don't know. I, I'm not going to design your whole system here for you, but um, it sounds like people aren't remembering the way the government works. And um, I'm just asking the question. You don't even need to answer, but it's just something to consider whether or not we need sure. to clarify or repeat. Uh, the way things work for people. I understood. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so we can talk about this again in the future. Uh, that's the unit. Do you recognize? Judy? I would just like to say in regard We're not to public agencies that are available to help people, in my case, it had to be approved, and I was not late with my friends. Never have been. The agency that you have something to say? We wondered that, whether you should be in that. You have something to say to me? Uh, my comment was this is not public comment time, and we are taking it out of order, which is a, okay. You know, we need to stick to the agenda. Yeah, can you wait until the, um, we're almost, we're getting there. Uh, unit vacancy report, tenant account receipt. We've got that facilities, that new bros. Yes. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Hang on, Judy, all right? Please. Okay, so um, I want to give an update for the window project. That's what we have on the agenda. I knew we had something coming up, but I didn't have any of the um, 
proposals uh, for change order at the time we put the packet together and we put the agenda together. But I did want to give an update because um, we did a mock-up over in the vacant unit seven. And when they did that, they found out there was no wall to support the addendum, which is below the windows. There's a wall that we were going to put some PVC panel and there was not a wall to support that when they opened it up. And they says, oh, we're going to have to build that wall and all the little pieces that go with it. And so they sent a request for a, a change order. Um, and then we have a proposal for a change order. So now we, we have these Do in the stock. members have these? This were not available for the packet. I could provide them. I can provide them yeah, down. Yeah, we'll pass them out. Yeah, yeah. please. Yeah. So yeah. that they have the numbers. So what's it going to do to the overall so, budget cost? So uh, I'll summarize that. It's $28,000 to do it. And I actually have all the figures written down. So <laughs> for how many units? How many units? I'm this sorry. is for all of the elderly. 28000 for all of them. And what I'll do is... Uh, sorry, these got all mixed up. You could email all of us if you like. Or yeah, I mean, I, I, could, I could do that. Um, basically, no, the, I, I just mixed them all up with all the board packet. So I apologize. I wasn't, well, ready, to pass, uh, I wasn't you, ready to pass them out. Yeah, why don't you ask somebody to email I'll, them out, okay? I'll, I'll, we'll get them sent out. So yeah. <clears throat> there was a proposal because basically it said uh, what, I, what I just summarized. There's a knee wall had to be built in order to support the material. The dollar amount is... Um, the 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 original bid was one hundred ninety two thousand dollars and some change, and then this is twenty eight thousand. So altogether, the the, the it's now going to cost two hundred twenty one thousand one hundred fifty four dollars and ninety cents. Um, we have one hundred ninety two thousand from our capital fund, plus we have seventy five thousand from the. Community Preservation Act funds, which and so that comes to two hundred sixty-seven thousand. So we still have forty-six thousand five hundred thirty-one left over after this change order. So we can talk about going to Vegas. So, that's so that's <laughs> no, what we do is we use the cap community funds first. We keep those funds yeah. so we can put them towards a unit turnover or some other project needs to be done here. So whenever there's funds left over, they never go to waste. They go to a good use here on the facility. Right. Um, so, <clears throat> I'm sorry, but the CPA funds were specifically for windows, right? Yes. Okay. So, so we will spend those for the windows. Okay. Right. Yep. We will use the CPA fund. Basically, if we have funds available, we use the C C CPA funds first, first, and then we'll add whatever we have available from our uh, formula funding that yeah. Department of Housing, which I guess they changed their name today, but <laughs> so we're going to have to get used to that new name. But um, it's not DHCD. There's a new name for it, but. Um, the, uh, so so when they, they provide those funds to us, then we anything left over, we take and use them for another project. Okay. Yeah. So we, we will... I, got to, I don't want to take any time, was, just, but I do have the question. No, it's How can there not be a wall under the existing windows to support the existing windows? There's there's a wall under the window, but there's not, there's not a... Um, there was not support for the... There's a PVC panel under the window. Right now, it was a board. It was a little piece of paneling, piece of wood. Okay. And we didn't want it to change that out as part of this project because why are we going to put all new vinyl windows in and then still have to worry about boards rotting out underneath? So we we didn't have a place to support that. And the window that designed currently is a storm window attached to the outside, whereas the new window is wider than okay. the, you know. So. Can I ask a question? If there was an architectural report before this project happened, why didn't the architect pick this up? So the architect drawings that were available did not give the detail that they found when they pulled the window apart. That's the wise reason why they uh, decided to do a mock-up before they ordered all the windows, because they are also actually changing out the style of windows to fit the opening that is existing. So um, it was a great idea to do the mock-up. They did the mock-up. Now they know what's needed, providing we approve the, uh, the change order, they can go ahead and order the windows and, and have them all in. They said five to six weeks to get them, and then we'll start putting them in. All right, so you're looking for a motion. Looking for a motion to approve okay. the change order Further. for 
117082 is the project number. 117082. I have a, a question. Um, you said that the style of window will change. Are we still getting double hungs that are tilt out that we can? Yes, let me just clarify that. Um, so we're still getting, everything's going to look exactly the same. We have the, the grids in the window, the double hung windows. The only difference is the mounting flange. Instead of being mounted as a replacement window, they're mounted as new construction window. Okay. So they'll have a flange that'll actually be more secured. It's, a be it's actually a better solution now that we're tearing it all apart you know so pamela i'm going to ask you does this put any strain on any other budgets that you had hoped the money would be available for the 28 grand i mean we we could have used that somewhere else but yeah no it's uh, we have no other choice unfortunately and i would like to say that's an excellent question too sue that was the first thing i said we didn't, how did the architect miss that yes. oh, so yeah. the other part of that too is so, so some of the uh part the drawings i pulled out the uh blueprints from the original building, there what's being shown is not always what's there. That and that's an explanation they gave me too. So that's why it that happened in nineteen sixty, right? Yeah, exactly. Where are the old windows going? Are they being recycled appropriately? Well, there is a um they're not being recycled. The the part of this project was um there was they call it hot. There was asbestos in the sealant. So all of those all of those windows were all um, sealed up <coughs> and, and carted off. I don't know how they dispose of. It's basically a hazardous hazardous waste at this point. But that was part of the bid that was disposing of. You know the uh, we had basically had had a, had a whole another company come in and do the abatement to take the windows out before the company can come in. And install the new window, so it's it's a little bit longer process, but this is an abatement process because there is asbestos in the sealant around the windows. And would that be removed? The oh, it's all removed. Yeah, yeah, it's all re it's all removed as part of this process. It gets taken out by the abatement company. It's, it's cleared, and it, there's a testing there's a testing that's done from a there's all these different companies involved because they can't test their own work. So there's a third party that checks the the. The asbestos, make sure it's clear, and then they put the new windows in. Okay. Any other questions for Bruce? I think they, um, I'll entertain a motion to approve the uh, cost overrun. Well, I, I move we approve the cost overrun for the window project. I'll do a second. And, and other discussion? All in favor of approving the window? Aye. Unexpected cost. Yeah. Aye. 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 Yes, I vote yes. Five yes. 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 Thank you. Sue? All right. Yes. What else you got, Bruce? Okay. So there was just just um giving you an update. There was a chimney project that was scheduled for years out. It was like 26, 27. The year's 2026, 2027. But we moved it up because we had ARPA funds available, which was part of the federal grant money that came. So with those ARPA funds, we are actually moving forward with the chimney project. So we're going to rebuild all the chimneys that have uh, needed to be basically repointed, bricks coming loose, things like that. And so that is moving forward. We've had the architect here. He had to get testing. Believe it or not, they had to test the bricks for asbestos. I just I tried to fight this because it cost us to do these tests. And I'm like, why are we having bricks tested? But unfortunately, they said that the, the, the laws and regulations testing everything all it could be the sealant around the chimney we went into every boiler room and checked to the chimneys down there and so we got I, I had all this testing done and that's where it's at so now that the testing is done the architect can give his fee proposal he had to wait for those results to come back to know if there was a uh, uh, any asbestos for the chimney project basically so just let you know that the chimney project is finally moving forward i know a few few people have been waiting to hear that so um the only other thing i have is um is uh, the work order report we just put this out it's information no vote required if you have any questions i'd be happy to answer them um, we have had some few things come up um matter of fact i will let you know it's not it, you didn't see it in this month's budget but we had to replace um a boiler over here and we also had water damage when they came in. I can't say what caused the, <laughs> what caused for sure a pressure relief valve that suddenly popped after they were flushing the fire hydrant. I'm not saying that's the cause, but 
right after they flushed the fire hydrant, <laughs> a, a pressure relief valve popped, it flooded the unit, and, the, and so I contacted the insurance company because the whole unit was flooded. Um, so there may be some expenses. We don't know for sure whether we're going to use the insurance. It might, it might be beneficial depending on what the costs are that we don't file a claim because then our insurance rates go up. Yeah. So, so we'll look at that carefully yeah. as, we, as it progresses and we see what the, what the costs are going to be. That'll be next month. Um, but that's some of the things that have been going on here. We have had boiler replacements, uh, units getting flooded, and uh, get our hands full here. So. Thank you. The um, chimneys are, are budgeted already? Yes, chimneys are budgeted, and it's not being coming out of our formula funding. It's yeah. coming out of ARPA funds, which is a, additional federal funds that came in. Gotcha. And um, if, the, uh, if there's proven history of hydrant flushing causing pressure valves to blow, um, will you be able to make a claim against whoever flushes the hydrant? So at this point, um, what I did is contact the, um, the Department of Public Works here in Hadley, and they came out from the water department. I showed them what happened, and they said that it was, well, as it is, it, 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 as it is possible, it is highly unlikely. They kept saying the word. It's highly unlikely that that would cause it. So they didn't say <laughs> they it, it was caused by the flushing. They said it was highly unlikely. It, it, it would not be me pressing that, but if we would do an insurance claim, the insurance company may press that. I, I, that wouldn't be something that I do. Bruce, since our boilers are fairly new, if you're talking back here and not in the back, aren't they covered under any kind of warranty? So this happened at the house at the 705s, not here not at this development. So they didn't get new boilers when we did then. Yeah. All right, I don't think we need a vote to accept Bruce's report. No, I have a question. Oh, Eric, please. <clears throat> On the dumpsters, um, I noticed that every week, starting April 10th, I don't know what the ones prior to this were, April 10th, April 18th, 25th, May 1st, 8th, 15th, and 22nd, Trash removal around the dumpster. Do we not have larger dumpsters and receptacles? Because I would think that would be an issue and a problem. Sure. So what we did, what we did is we, 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 we started updating our work order system, and we put something called scheduled maintenance in. So it's more of an inspection. If there's anything there, take care of it. It's not necessarily something wrong. It's under scheduled maintenance. And so it's kind of like mopping the, the you see the mopping in the hallway every week as a schedule of maintenance, it's not always a, um, you know, because there's a problem in the hallway, it's just a... I see it now, it's down here at the bottom. Is it under schedule? It yeah, says schedule, the left side. but then it goes to the next page. Sure. So that's what I didn't see. Sure, so it is scheduled. It, it, so it's it not does, something that's happened. It does happen time. time to time, and when we see that it happens, we have an issue with it, we try to get on the cameras. Now we, we have an out, a camera that when we set the camera up out back, we made sure it could see the dumpster. A lot of times, maybe a car would pull up, and as they back up, you get the license plate right there, and we could see if it was somebody dumping something in there that should not go in there. Um, we also did increase the size of the dumpster because it, if it, in the past, it had excess off to the side. So we made the dumpster a little bit bigger, cost a little bit more, but it, it, it really is, it actually is a saving in the long run because we're sending maintenance over there to take care of all that extra stuff on the side. But no one's dumping like chairs and umbrellas and things they don't want, and, or they do. Not we, we, we have had some some instances of that, and when it's brought to my attention, we'll get on the cameras and try to find out, you know, what's going on. And if we can identify, we ask and uh, we charge them for the people if we have to bring it to the top. It's a yeah, because if you had to take mattress. anything to the head and transfer station, you get charged for old tires and yes. whatever so if we can appliances. Identify it, did it, we can charge them. And I was, I was here one time with contractors. We were actually looking at this window project. And as we were looking at it, someone's pushing a couch over there. Where are you going with that? Oh, in the dumps. No, you're not. <laughs> You've got to dispose of that yourself. So, I mean, people will try to just put a couch there. You know, it's like, no, we... Right. we we, we get regular pickup once a week, though, or yes, from the dumpster? Yes, the, the, the trash is once a week. The recycles every two weeks. Okay, we're going to move it along here. Yes, thank you. I, I do have a really quick question. Really quick, so, so for tenants' information, I know I don't know how to get rid of a couch. So is there 
a service or anything that okay. in the newsletter should we do we yeah. have printed job removal not okay. least, it done that. and it's a suggestion we can't it's tell me where it okay. oh. wonderful but Kendra has quite a few numbers that she put in the newsletter so that's where I've been getting all of the furniture and requirements. It's been very inexpensive and most yet. Okay, thank you, Tracy. All right, we're gonna keep it moving all along here. Uh commissioner's discussion of the Mary Koshik letter. Yes. Um Harry. Could you well start that discussion? <clears throat> Um, yes, I guess I can. Um, first of all, I was surprised that we received this or that it came copying our, um, what, what is that, Harry? The letter. Yeah. We all received it, that, that the okay. audience, what it is about that. Yep. Yeah. No one has their it's copy? Not, it's not in my packet. No, no, this was not, this was given out in February. February, okay. I, and I was prepared to discuss it in February, or excuse me, in March, because we got this February 27th. And I've highlighted a number of things that, uh, you know, where we could probably start, maybe the executive director can tell us why we received this, because this is an item or an issue between Belcher Town and the Amherst Housing Authority Board of Commissioners, who has Belchertown under their wing. So I was number one surprised why we have it. But since we did get it, I have a lot of questions, but maybe you could give us a summary of it. So she, Marie Chosek, chose to give it to Hadley, too, as the letter states, because it was brought up at the Hadley Board of Commissioners. It was brought up, um, there was conversations with a board member and the LTO president from Belchertown. There were conversations with the LTO president from Belchertown in residence, and residents also went to the select board meeting and were also spreading this information, misinformation. So that's when it was investigated, that's why she wrote the letter, because she felt you had you folks had the right to know what was going on. But in March, we were told it wasn't fully investigated at that point because we didn't have it to discuss in March. No, it and was, it's been tabled for two meetings. No, it was fully investigated. That's why they made a ruling. Well, I can clearly see it that it this correspondence that came under the chair uh, of Belchertown Board of Commissioners. But I would suspect this was written by an attorney because there's an awful lot of legal language in here, sightings of CMRs, mass general laws, um, very, uh, very detailed, but without actual facts. Uh, the executive okay, session, I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. Okay. The executive session that took place uh, with respect to this item, mm -hmm. uh, have those executive session minutes been released yet? To they will not account? be released. They're not released. They There's are not going to be. No, no, not at this time. They're not. So I'll defer to our uh, uh, tenant representative who knows a lot about this legalese and open meeting laws and all of that. Uh, executive session minutes. Once the uh, matter and the items have been fully vetted and handled, executive session minutes generally come back into an open meeting. Maybe you can explain since you have a lot more knowledge of the all reason this. they won't be is because they involve a tenant. And a tenant's confidentiality is sacred. No one, not not um, not in Belchertown, nor this board, is allowed to, to violate a tenant's confidentiality. And that right, uh, after the death of a tenant, it still exists. So because I'm guessing because um, the executive session involved the discussion of a tenant, a deceased tenant, those executive session minutes will never be released. There's also a current tenant that was discussed. Oh, a current well. tenant. Current and discussed. Tenant. Okay. Yep. 
to doubt. Reese, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Because of the fact that we were that the board was presented with this packet, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. why do they all of a sudden get cut out of the process? Correct. I mean, to me, you don't. You I'm don't. I'm sorry. Who, question. Who got cut out of the process? The board. I mean, anybody that received you mean this form, this or oh. or anybody else who received this letter from the the member of the board member in Belchertown. You mean the chair of the board in Belcher Town? No, I'm saying anybody that received this letter that wasn't well, they're part. They weren't part of the executive session. But the fact that we that people got involved should not they be involved the whole way through? It's no. like it's like giving somebody candy and then just taking the candy away. Well, I mean, we're not sure. we're not discussing candy here, Sue. We're discussing mm -hmm. the rights to confidentiality of a state aided housing tenant. And no, we don't have any right to any information except for, but for what the Board of Commissioners in Belchertown uh, gave us. And they gave us that letter. I think it clearly states in that letter. They gave us that letter because two tenants, who were one of them, went to the select board meeting and discussed this matter with the select board, which was abhorrent to me. Um, Isn't that breaking confidentiality that you're telling people that are watching this? You no, no, no. You did yourself appear in public on a video. I'm not violating your confidentiality. You chose to appear in That's public. That's not why I went to. Oh, That's not why I went to. The you switch. discussed a situation at a select board meeting. It was an open meeting. It was video recorded. And the video is available for the entire world to see. Just like this video is. That is, is correct. And you're saying that we should have not spoken. Is there a question that we're trying to right. answer? Yeah. So you, what Harry had this question of, to me, it, what I believe from my read of that letter was the chair of the uh, housing authority in Belchertown was trying to give the Hadley Board of Housing information to dispel the untruths that were spoken by a couple of tenants and someone who was the president of the um, okay. local tenants organization in Belchertown. All right, thank you. Who's, who's the attorney that wrote this? Right. Marie John Bible? No, Marie Chosick wrote the letter. Marie Chosick is a 10 year plus uh, housing chairperson. She's educated. She's certified. They were aware of the laws that we were citing. I mean, it, it, it's a detailed. You folks follow those laws. Or I follow those them. laws, right? Yeah. I think we should bring it up in front of an attorney. Would be would be our you know to have a look to make sure that this was written by her and not by what an why attorney. Would, she signed it, Sue. It doesn't. Uh, yes, it does um, matter. It doesn't matter. Fair, 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 fair. She signed it for Please. the board. Let's not argue with each other. That's not working. <laughs> right. Harry. Right. All right. The next item is the audit discussion. Harry, I guess, is that also you? Uh, mm-hmm. Um, I found it interesting back in February <clears throat> when um, we were discussing this, that, um, well, actually, let me back up just a minute. Um, back in February, we had a number of tenants attend our meeting that were um, commenting on uh, our relationship with the Amherst Housing Authority and everyone's happy and all of that. And uh, there was no discussion about Hadley unyoking themselves with Amherst. The prior board of commissioners took that responsibility and joined Amherst. Yet people showed up. So I found it interesting for the audit discussion that in April, unannounced, not on the agenda anywhere that we were going to be discussing, Gary DePace is here. And even after questions were asked and you directed Gary Pace, the Pace, asking him, did we really need it on it and all of that things that were going on, 
I still hold that the fee accountant and his treasurer's report that he cannot audit his own work. And I've been told a number of times, and now I get shaking heads and everybody disagrees with me, but I'm going to still hold that we should have an independent financial audit because our affairs have been managed by Amherst Housing Authority for four years. And I'm going to hold it that we should still conduct an independent financial audit. Um, I will temper that motion to have the audit pending if you wanted to have the meeting with Gary DePace, um, because I would want to know where in the budget this $16,000 would come from to fund this independent financial audit. But I still firmly believe that an audit should be undertaken for four years since we have been with Amherst, and Amherst has run our whole operation and all the finances. So my motion would be that we conduct the financial audit and uh, go from there. But that's my motion. Um, Harry, do you want to amend your motion to pending the meeting with Gary DePace? You just sort of did a second ago. I think I'd like to. Yeah, I did, but I'm going to change my mind. I want to make the motion to conduct the financial audit, and when we meet with Gary DePace, find out where, because when we were told in October that we had to vote the budget, one of the questions I asked is, is there movement in the budget between line items? And I was told yes. So I still want to make the motion for the audit, but I will meet with Gary to pay because we'll find out how we're going to pay for it. Yeah. He can't audit his own work. I'm sorry. Okay. And so, the AUP audit does not really take into finances and the DHCD people, whatever they're doing, but I get shaking heads, so nobody agrees. But the way to clear it up is have a four-year independent financial. Okay. So is that pending uh, the discussion with Gary DePace? No, that's my motion for today's action. And when we meet with Gary DePace, we'll figure out how we're going to pay for it. Okay. So uh, an audit of what? Do we have to identify what we're auditing when you make your motion? The four years that we have been under Amherst Housing Authority's control and their control of our bank accounts, our bills, our checks, our finances, and any other procedures. So hang on. So we have in a the scope of the audit that will be defined. Right. So we have a motion to have an independent audit of the last four years of operations at Hadley Housing Authority um, for an approximate cost of unknown, but we think around sixteen to eighteen thousand dollars. Do I have a second? Second. Second discussion, Reese. Yes, um, I, I'm so glad that that you offered to because we've already voted on this in the quorum one. But I'm so glad that you have come forward and said, you know, pending Gary DePace can tell us where to pay for it. As the treasurer, I can tell you there is no money to pay for it without harming the tenants. Every penny is allocated in our budget and taking $16,000 out means the tenants are going to suffer somewhere. We have $86,000 or 80 something thousand dollars in reserves. What's that money sitting in the reserves for? We have more than that in reserves. And what is that so being used for? Or what's it reserved for? So what, what it's reserved for is when the boiler went and we had to replace the boiler. It's reserved for when the, the tenant is flooded. If the insurance doesn't cover it, we're going to hit it and go into our reserves. So that it does, it directly impacts tenants. We cannot get any formula funding, any capital money from the Department of Housing for any kind of um, fossil fuel burner system anymore. We have to, they want us to convert to electric. Converting to electric is very expensive not only for the conversion process, but especially over in a family housing, now they have a three bedroom home that they're heating on electric. Mr. It, it's outrageous. Yeah. Yeah. So it is, the reserves right. are for when we run into these problems. And the reserves are there, if I can remind, because the Amherst Housing Authority came in. So again, if, if you wanna unyoke, I mean, we're really getting to the point in the year where we have to start talking about this. So if you're not happy with Amherst, I gave you the packet multiple times on how to get a new executive director or a new managing agent. Mm -hmm. And you, that's what you should do then. 
have a board discussion about that. And so I would like to finish my question. Yeah. So my second part is, if you, you can see in the minutes where we were in 2010, where we were in 2019, as far as reserves, and where we are today. Now, between 2019 and today, our reserves under the management of Amherst have increased astronomically because of the excellent management Amherst has provided. If there was a problem in an audit that, to me, I mean, you were a state auditor, so correct me, okay? But when you have an organization like a housing authority that has very low levels of funding, we never get a, enough money that we need, but how did we get from, what was it, Terry, in, in 2019 before Amherst took up, took Hadley on, it's in the minutes, and where we are today, 24%. if there if there was, was any skullduggery and nefarious stuff going on, how did our reserves increase? Because aren't you looking for someone siphoning or embezzling or whatever? Because it's not there, or our reserves would not be this high. No one has made any allegations, accusations of that sort at all. Okay. What I have said and I'll say again that our fee accountant cannot audit his own work. He does and not. And reserve money that's grown. He I does. don't know that number from a different number because I don't know what the finances are. So it's been managed. Let me just. Okay. So it's been okay. managed and, and overseen and operated by Amherst. And there's been no independent oversight of, right. of that. But operation. there has been. Oversight by DHCD. I, I, I have an issue with the DHCD. I'll sue just a second. I don't <laughs> want these meetings to turn into arguments. <laughs> Harry, just, just to listen. Harry is making a, a statement on principle that he understands from his long career as an auditor that people shouldn't be auditing their own work. It's not an accusation of wrongdoing. It's a statement yeah, of correct. professional... Um, Whatever you call that principle, I guess. Uh, Reese, and if you keep doing that, I'm gonna <laughs> go ahead. Uh, is making a clarification that in her mind, there's no evidence of any kind of wrongdoing. So there's no conflict here. One is a statement that in, in Harry's previous life and world, people didn't audit their own work. You're saying things are looking good here with the numbers. We shouldn't be so worried. So um, you can vote yes or vote no, Pamela. Real quick. So please. real quick, Gary DePace is not our auditor. Gary DePace is our fee accountant. Our auditor for the past four years was Lisa Fallon. It is going to change next year because DHCD does not allow you to have the same auditor for a number of years. Does that so include to, Hadley? Ha absolutely. Yeah, Hadley has its own independent audits. So, yeah, G Gary does not audit our, our finances. He doesn't. He's our the fee independent account. auditor for him. Lisa Fallon. Under an AUP agreed upon procedures. And I spoke to her and she tells me that there was no financial looking at it. That she didn't look at any finances. I actually she does how procedures. you talk, she so you have a different viewpoint. No, actually the AUP absolutely does finances. That's not what I was told. You I believe you spoke with Michael Guider. I spoke you, to him as well. Okay. Yes. No, the AUP because he is, does your single audit in Amherst. The AUP spoke to the AUP absolutely covers finances and warrants, and it does. The PMR does not do finances. So I'm going to absolutely. suggest again, Harry, you keep, please keep your motion if you if you feel strongly on the principle that we meet with Gary and hear very clearly all of us that we can make it. I mean, I think we should make this a public meeting. Exactly what the pace and the other people are doing for us, and see if we get comfortable or not. And if you remain uh, convinced that the principle of people not auditing their own work still stands in this case, then I will back you up for the independent audit. Right now, I prefer to have the meeting first and then offer my opinion on whether we need uh, more more audit um, power or not. So my motion is on the floor. Okay. If it does not pass, then I will. Okay, so that's where things are for me. I want to talk to you. But I made my motion. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor. Um, I second. And you seconded. Any other discussion? Uh, all those in favor? 
Aye. Aye. All against? No. 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 So, so far, that's it. Uh, any abstentions? So, so far, we're going to hold off on doing an independent audit until after the meeting with our... And should we be inviting the audit people? That's fine. What's that? I said that's fine. I'm, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Okay. Should we be inviting the audit people to come and get all us educated as to exactly what they do? We could. I, I would like to point out, though, too, the board did have um, an independent training with Gary DePace and John Leibel and Elaine O'Donnell. No, not you. Uh, not but the, But... Harry and uh, John Allen, all of them had the training, but we can set up another training. I'm sorry, I've change changed chairs so much, but uh, no, <laughs> it would be really helpful. I don't think it has to be very long. <laughs> so I, I'm on the um, finance committee at the Pioneer Valley Transit Authority. That's almost a $60 million budget. Yeah. And um, we have to listen to the auditor for quite a while, go through what work he did, and what sampling he did and everything. And we either get comfortable or we don't. And unfortunately, I think PBJ does a very good job with their, with their auditing. Mm. So if that's not a big hassle. Yeah, I'll sit there. Um, I think that's money well spent if they're going to charge you for their time. And if you guys don't want to sit through it, or sit through it again, that's going to be up to you. I'd like to hear it. Sue, I'd like you to hear it. Were you at the last one? Mm -hmm. Would you come back? Yeah. Good. All right, would you come to that? Yes. Excellent. Okay, thank you. Um, review of benefits management agreement. So that's a review of the agreement with Amherst, I believe, was the purpose of this item. Um, so you would ask for a review of what the benefits are of working underneath Amherst. Right? Yes, a written, if you could provide the ward members with a written letter stating what are the benefits of being an independent housing authority so it's versus being with Amherst, I'm not talking about providing more hours, you know, because we already know that you're providing more hours because you're larger. Things that above and beyond providing more hours for tenants. What are we benefiting by staying with Amherst rather than going back to how the housing authority? Yeah, so if you have the binder, it's in the binder. It's a public housing notice that comes out that um, with the the overview of a management right. agreement. You directly, the executive director and director, if that's possible. You the want ones me, that are actually running the facilities. You want me to hand you the PHN or what is it that you're you're looking Personally, for? coming from you and Mary, what is your personal, why do you feel that we as housing authorities should stay with Amherst Housing? What are the benefits? I mean, the benefits are financial. The inc but we have, with, with people who don't understand financial don't know how much of those finances are actually trickling down to Hadley and how much you're staying in Amherst. So when so when we at what trickles down to Hadley is not what you, you, Hadley gets a direct subsidy from the Department of Housing. Right. All of the bills are paid from Hadley's accounts. They're not in the name of Amherst. Everything is separate. The only thing that is shared is your staff and equipment from time time to time. But all of the money stays in and it doesn't. How does our reserve fund grow? Your reserve fund, because it's the economies of scale. So in business, when you when you do things bigger on a larger scale, regionalize, do management agreements, things tend to cost less money over time. So you're for one thing that's really helped Hadley is that you don't have employees anymore. You're not the employees are all under. Um, the Amherst Housing Authority. Not the kind of thing you'd like itemized or, or it's in the well, packet, you said? It's, it's in the packet, yeah. But if employees went from a part-time employee to a full-time employee with benefits, right. then they are, then the money, I mean, it might not be coming out of Hadley, but it's still coming out of the big umbrella because yeah. there's more benefits provided, there's more salaries paid. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to understand is, is the case, I'm sorry, is, is, you know, many more people that are here than before we just had a secretary, an executive director, and a maintenance man. Now we have so many people involved. So much more monies are going out to these people. Does this affect the tenants? Do their rents go up? No, no. the tenants' rents are always 30% of their income or 27% of the As a family. board member, what the benefits are, because, and I asked you a while back to provide a list of other housing authorities in Western Mass that have joined together, and is it working? To look at the whole thing about being a larger housing authority versus just being 
a single housing authority. It's like definitely it's for, it's for, look at Franklin Regional. Franklin Regional. How many housing authorities are they joined up there? But that's that's just one. Seven? Six, six or seven. Six, so they have six or seven. Um, you have, um, you had Warren. But just because it's happening doesn't mean it's working. But you just asked me for a list of I know, them, so I'm giving I'm you the list. <laughs> so it's just the feedback, in other words, get together with these other housing authorities. We get together with other housing authorities all the time. I, I go to... You do, but we don't, as board members, know, get feedback, you, in other words. You get to go to these meetings as well right? in the conference so that you can get the information. Okay, so let me, you could talk to Pam a little more about what mm -hmm. would satisfy that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, Let's try to keep our comments brief if we can. Sorry. Okay. I'm, yeah, of course. No, I'm bad at that, too. So, um, uh, at Mass Naro conference in April, I did go to the offering uh, regarding management agreements and housing authorities joining together for this economy of scale. We had, as part of our group, we had people from many different housing authorities under various, uh, under the management agreements, sometimes two times, sometimes three housing authorities together. The feedback was overwhelmingly positive. Every single person on the board from these various had said, it's good to hear. Their reserves had increased, the tenants were happier, more things were getting done faster. Okay, thank you. That's helpful actually. When is the next Mass Narrow conference? In September. It's coming up in September. So I, I can send out, um, I don't believe the registration opened no, yet. No. Um, but it, as soon as it does, so anyone interested in going, okay, and so Sue, you're new on the board, so you're not aware, we uh, Mass Narrow, which you're a member of because the Hadley Housing Authority is, um, does these uh, annual conferences and semi-annual conferences, one in the spring, one in the fall. And it's three days of just session after session on all different kinds of topics from budgets to work orders to resident service court, all kinds of information for board members and the housing authority sets everything up for you and, and takes care of everything. Okay, so I just want to thank Reese for going to that conference and apologize for not being able to my, make it myself. So I've got stage four melanoma cancer. My days may be very numbered. So I had medical stuff going on. Uh, so you think you got problems. You know, yeah, right. <laughs> you're, not, you're not the only one. So I couldn't go, but I'd like to go in September if all is uh, going well with my treatments and everything. And I would encourage the other uh, board members too. Um, yeah, I just absolutely. make excuses for not having gone last time. So we should all try to attend that conference if, if that's allowed. September 17th. Okay. So uh, September 17th. Do you want to talk a little bit about narrow is. Mass narrow is, uh, well, narrow is the, the, National Organization for Public Housing. So National Mass Association of Housing and Redevelopment Officials. There you go. And so Mass Narrow yeah. is the Excellent. one for for uh, the state. They have uh, you know course offerings for. Do they do? Well, this how it's where we we get all our training and certification yeah. through Naro. There's also another agency that will do it for the federal side. Are these conferences um, intended for commissioners to come? Yep, yeah. there's about a even though we're not allowed to get involved with daily operations, there yeah. oh, the no, the seminars and breakouts. Are there, there's like almost every you know time session. There's there's like five different offerings: one for board members, one for tenant reps, okay. one for. Yeah, but All you right. can go to any of them because yeah. it's just the the more you know, the greater yeah. you understand. Just because it's almost one o'clock, would you mind talking more about the conference conference Wait. next meeting, or do you want to? Oh, no, I'm done. Okay. All right. So there is a public public meeting, uh, public comment item on the agenda here. Judy, would you still like to make a comment, please? Yeah, just also talk about it now that it's been already talked about, but. Here are the things that I'm curious about. Wi Fi in the community room. Oh, that's for Bruce. I know. I asked Why myself. So, uh, I'm just understanding how this works. Um, it, it, public comments is we're supposed to respond to them, or are they just public yeah. comments? You don't respond. I do have a work order for the Wi Fi, by the way, with our new IT company, but. Do you know when that's happening? I was told that. I, I don't. I have a work order with them, so when they get to it, I have a work order with the IT company that we hired. Okay. 
Go ahead. Just to make a comment, there yeah. can't be any. I'm not talking to you. Wow, that's just. I think we will choose. We will choose as human as human beings and as commissioners whether to have a conversation. So it's really your time to comment, mention concerns, things you're angry about, unhappy with, and we can choose. We're pleased with. Okay, we're pleased with. Get an answer to why we're having what we Hadley is having this turnover of property managers. We've had five. In the last four years. Yeah, I'm going to write down your question, Judy. Okay. okay, so why, why turnover of you, property managers? You know, we we don't have a property manager again. Okay, they so we got Tyrus. Yeah, we like Good question. All right, what else you got? Continuity. There's no one here. Okay. There's the one. manager. Um. I wondered why we couldn't get agenda this paper agenda for people that come to this meeting and then don't know what's going on. We can on. certainly do that. They used to. What else you got? Good. This this is good stuff, Judy. Thank you. Um I wanted to correct if or maybe I'm wrong. The number of empty apartments was three. There's four empty apartments actually. And I know. In Golden Court? In Golden Court. How many, so that's the question, how many open apartments in Golden Court? Okay, I will, re we will take all your questions at once when you're done. Okay. Um, the explained agreement was mentioned a couple of times, and I don't think the tenants as a whole understand that they can make an agreement. Okay. It's an agreement. Mary just mentioned this a minute ago, that... You you do make it clear to tenants that they can get, enter a payment agreement. How, how do you make them know? How are they notified? In the policy. It's in the policy. And we, and we discuss it with the tenant. The tenants have a piece of uh, And we do discuss it with the tenants when when the tenants are in arrears. We discuss it with them. So when they're in arrears, we just can put in a newsletter. Can you actually? Talked to me the other day, mm -hmm. asking like, what would be good for the to put in the um, agenda. I also wanted to make make a remark on agencies that are available to people that are like in the rent. And RAP was mentioned. The problem with RAP, there's no problem with RAP. When I applied, I was not approved by management. RAP approved me. Management wouldn't send it in, and that's what has to happen. But they wouldn't. And then management has no Okay, I don't they want to. Do that. Okay, so Judy, forgive me. I don't want to enter into the world of managing the apartments here and the payments because that's the commissioners really aren't allowed to do that, and I don't want to leave a public record of doing that. So if you need to have uh, private discussions or write uh, present a letter or something like that to the commissioners. I encourage you to do that, but we can't comment on how you individually were handled by the administration regarding RAF. It's nothing personal here. We don't, you know, obviously, you know, we don't know you so well. I just think that people who are looking for money to pay down rents, I wasn't one of them. I can't explain why you weren't approved. I would pursue that if they, if you don't think there was a good reason. I don't know how to pursue I don't that. Know where to pursue it. A DHCD, yes. I would imagine. DHCD, I don't know. Do the tenants have a representative? A D, a they, D, tenants D, can, they can contact the DHCD. So maybe it works. Why don't you work with your tenants representative and find out who would DHCD no. would listen to you? Okay. Any, anything else? Um, no. You document. Oh, yeah. Is that necessary? What, what was that? The I don't hear Comments it. beside childish. Comments. I'm sorry, I didn't hear anything. She's getting upset. Okay. What else have you got? Your your points are, are well taken, Judy. So go okay, ahead. Thank you. Um, the dumpster. I know there's a new dumpster, but there's the recycle is the one that's always overflowing. There's always junk and trash and pick everything all over the ground. The recycle. Is not a bit not a recycling person. space. Okay, I will ask that. Um, 
I certainly have the same question as Sylvia, only I've been awarded a little different. What? How are the tenants going to suffer? Going to what? Suffer. How are the tenants going to lose out? What are we going to lose out by um, using money for something else? So on July, July? What would possibly be different? On uh, June 27th at 11 a.m., what's this month? June, right? No. We are going to have a presentation. Bruce, I think you're leading this. Am I right? Of what, you, what are you calling this? A master plan? <laughs> or it's called an annual plan. plan. Annual plan for fiscal year 2024, which starts in July or June. When's your, when's your fiscal year? October 1st. October. October 1st is our October. So as far as what they're going to be spending money on during the next fiscal year, on the 27th of this month, I don't know what day that is. I can look. 27th of June. We're still in May. Oh, sorry. June. Sorry. Thank you. Um, there's going to be a detailed discussion on what money is going to be spent on in the next fiscal year. So that may be a time to find out exactly. You're talking about the audit money? If, mm -hmm. if we spend money on an audit, what do you lose out? Hearing from Pamela and Reese that if we do this audit, it's going to take away from the tenant. Take away what? What could possibly be different okay. than it is now? I will, I will pursue that question. And I have not been through the um, uh, annual plan yet for the next fiscal year. But um, at some point, we all have to understand that the commissioners are not wrong. We happen to have a professional retired state auditor on the commission here in Hadley this time. So I consider that a blessing, not a curse. And if he has problems with, or if he perceives the people doing the bookkeeping or overseeing the bookkeeping or also auditing that oversight work, um, that's worth talking about in my mind. So um, what will be lost, I think, why don't you come to that meeting if you can on the 27th and listen carefully to what they're spending money on next year. It's been, it's been said at every board meeting for three months now that tenants are going to suffer if that money is used. Sue to staff's question. She didn't, I don't think she got the answer. And now I'm asking. Judy, if you've got... Five thousand dollars in the bank, and you spend one hundred and sixty of it. Well, that's one hundred and sixty less that's available for all the other things you might spend your money on. So it's reasonable for them to say, "Well, if we spend sixteen grand on an audit, that's sixteen grand less we have for everything else." So largely, that's um, different. Are we good? Are you good right now? Those are all good questions, Tracy. Please. Yes. Okay. First of all, you said we just ask questions. You don't answer. These are things that we'd like you to know how we're feeling. Well, that's already been ruined because it seems like the board, some of the members here, are taking on agendas of only a few of us here, not us as a whole, and definitely not Burke Way. So we need to make sure that all of this chat is not about one or two residents here. And that's the way I've seen today go. It's about one or two residents. It's not about all of us as a whole. And to me, and the residents that aren't here that I'm speaking for today, that's what we worry about, where the board only takes on a few people when there's more than 60 of us here. <laughs> At the time, um, you're not supposed to reply. Just like you kept replying with this other woman. So what I'm saying is I'd like you to do your jobs, pay the bills because six bills don't get paid. That's $300 out of our pocket. Why are we worrying about the $100 from the laundry machine when the board's not even doing the job to pay the bills on time so we don't get charged late fees? That's right. So wait, no, you're not supposed to repeat. Remember, we're supposed to let you know how we feel. Go ahead. Okay? So... When you have members on board and bring in certain people, and then they start chattering and chattering, how come we'll never apply to these certain amount of people, but they apply to all of us? That's not fair. 
Housing is shut, the authority is fair. It's also a business. People don't want to pay rent because they want to stick it to them. Then they're going to get charged. Why are some people's information about getting charged late fees and we're not working on everybody as a whole? You're taking up more time to deal with one or two tens when, shame on you, we have all of us represented, not just two or three people. And that's where I get really disgusted because we have late fees, late fees that we never had. Now we have late fees we have to pay. And is that fair? You're talking about money coming out, but is that fair? And then to worry about a hundred some dollars in a washing machine, I think the priorities really need to change folks. I really do. And I think everybody needs to be on the same page and we all need some compassion here where we take everybody as a whole, not one or two people. And some people here like to keep poking the bear. I don't have to worry about it. I'll send them $5 a month and they can't evict me. But they can charge you late fees. Oh, well, I'll see about that. I know somebody on the board. Those things should never take place. Okay? So, yes, we are upset here as a whole because the board is not listening to all of us. You're listening to a few people and a few people only. Anybody here is more than welcome to come and talk to all of us. Walk around in your group to make sure you have all the representation you need as legal. But I am so sick and tired of only a few people that you guys are trying to fix when they don't need fixing. You guys do. The board needs to be functional, pay the bills, policy and procedures. Other than that, I hope everybody had a good weekend. Thank you, Tracy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to run down the comments that came up in open. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Hi, I'm concerning air news. I would like to give a compliment to the Hadley Housing Authority and Amherst that they are putting in air conditioning. The other comment uh, is notice came to the door uh, when, a few days ago. I want the executive director of the place to take into consideration that this is a disabled and elderly tenant situation. Uh, people have medical appointments, people have family appointments, people here have doctor's appointments, different appointments. I would like to see an alternative. In other words, if you're here on that day, but an alternative. They have it in other housing authorities, they have it in many uh, affordable housing authorities, low-income authorities. This would be wonderful because then people who have medical appointments or anything. Yeah, this is uh, this is operation, so please. Okay. Next, concerning uh, the windows, uh, the new window project. Excuse me. This is public comment. Right. Should have came to the door. Excuse me. I'd like to my public comments for anyone. Yes, yes. Like, yeah, but please, not about operations, please. Okay. Okay, it's been in the works for one and a half years. The tenants have repeatedly requested that this be done in the spring and fall. I'm in the middle of the summer when gardens are in full June. This action to me shows a lack of compassion and respect for tenants. The third thing I will be very brief. Uh, memos are distributed door to door. The tenant's newsletter appears to always, as I read it, uh, and I do read it, shows threats to tenants when watering is uh, to be sure that uh, coming. I think there can be more common sense and more consideration. The upper place potted plants in front of doorways, blocking entrances, never placed potted plants. All of these things are very condescending to tenants. They are things that we just know the common sense. Uh, also about the parking lot, the last thing I'd like to say, the people in the development are uh, okay with the uh, parking lot people working on low speeds with their automobiles, but there are guests that are coming in, they're speeding, and these people 
uh, the tenant should not have a lease violation because of different guests. If I was living here, I wouldn't know which guests are coming in. Mm -hmm. And then I would get a lease. Okay. So these are all, again, these are day-to-day -day operations that really commissioners aren't supposed to get involved with parking lot issues, gardening issues, the way memos are getting out and all that. So none of this is appropriate for the commissioners to address. If you just wanted to speak publicly, you can go ahead and speak publicly, I suppose. But the commissioners aren't allowed to really get involved with that. Kind of so, yeah. We have, we have a chat with the okay. head on to, so every month we get to spill out all these problems and everybody's talking about it. We just need you to do your jobs and let everyday operations go to Amherst. Seriously, yeah. Amherst. All right. Race homes to spill. Race homes to spill. Well, my name is Grace. Yeah. Don't say that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's because I'm a violation of it. The tenant will think what they put in this sense, the board has no right or something to deal with it. I just want to hear that first. What's this now? Well, she wants to, she I wants to, to no, yeah. I have a big voice when I talk. Yeah, I can do it. Okay. okay. You said that the board has no right to go into the violation of the tenor, that is mm -hmm. putting it in this way that the tenants have been written a letter about violation. You said the board has no right to deal with it if such situation appears with what you said in that weekend. Which is that basically right? I'm not understanding the question. Well, I do though. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. So Grace. The Board of Commissioners, every Board of Commissioners for every housing authority has a limited scope where we can function. So, in, for instance, we deal with legal, financial, policy procedure, and oversight of the executive director. The executive director and her staff deal with day-to-day -day operations. So... Things mostly that Judy was bringing and that Helene were bringing up as comments have nothing to do with the board of direct uh, the board of commissioners. They are only for okay. So that's, yeah. okay. Oh, so excuse me. So hold, let me finish, please. Board, let me to let take me take care of the people who are around. That's what they stand for. No the board. No. We, the we, board of tenants have to stand for any situation and to resolve it. Because if they don't resolve it, what is the board work? If they what, don't resolve, what is affecting the tenants? The board is uh, only deals with legal, financial, policy and procedure, and oversight of the executive director. We don't get involved with things. The violation okay. is yeah. legal. Oh, Paul, as I said, policy and procedure, yes, we do. However, we don't we don't get involved in things that already have a policy and procedure like for rent collection. Yeah, that's what we are saying. We this don't get involved. You know, it's been addressed in a wrongly way because the the the, the staff, or I don't know, the board of the, the, the staff in uh, the office cannot be harassing tenor with violation letter oh, unnecessarily because you have to you have to write a letter of violation when that person commits a crime and before you send a letter of violation you have to give like three warnings nearly warnings by law of america then the fourth one can come to violation or discipline or penalty but this is not so what i came to see in Harbor, uh, Golden Court. There is a grievance policy. So, for instance, if you have a complaint, yeah, and you go to the if I make the complaint and go to who for me who send me the complaint, should, how will it be resolved? You should come to me. I don't know what no, you're talking no. about. So you I, send me a letter. I didn't send you anything. Then, if I come to you, how are you going did to I send it? I did not send you a letter. Okay. So if you if if my staff yeah. if my staff we should discuss with the 
That is threatening. That is threatening. Okay, well, you don't have to threaten us. All right, we it's in never talk like anything can trigger me up. Okay, you understand? I do. Then, if I send and that letter, I didn't do anything wrong. Then they send me a letter of garbage. Oh my god, I will be out of my sin again. Okay, so I'm I think I'm understanding what you you're saying. Send me a violation letter, I don't right. agree with it. So, I want the board to tell Mary. To remove it from my pie. Two letters. I want the board to remove it from my pie. Don't shake that. We can't. Grace, we can't. That's day to day operation. Okay. Okay. Then I can't no. take it off. Let's not pay I can't take it off in any day. Okay. You understand? I can go to any length by that letter. I'm sitting here before I went to Boston. I brought the letters to them, which I don't deserve it. And if the boy want to see the letter, ask for my pie. I don't deserve the two letters Mary wrote to me. And it should be removed. And when it is not removed, then we have something to discuss. Okay, thank you. So you're um, smart enough to realize that this whole system of boards only being allowed to set policies and procedures is nonsense because every policy and every procedure relates to the day-to-day -day operations of the housing authority. So for them to tie our hands and say, well, we better just discuss big picture policies and big picture, pol and big picture procedures, um, it, it's, it's not rational, it doesn't work. I mean, I've talked about this with other commissioners it's like, what are we supposed to do? You come in here with real world issues about correspondence, letters you've gotten, or this or that, and we're not supposed to get involved with day-to-day -day stuff, just make policies. It doesn't really work. So that's really what you're talking about. Should we talk to Mary about, does this woman have letters in her, uh, unfair letters and stuff? We're not supposed to get involved with that kind of stuff. So that leaves you with having to approach the people who wrote the letters to find out if they were to discuss and figure out whether they're fair or not, or else approach DHCD. Oh, I should go to DHCD. Probably you should go to DHCD. I don't have a clear answer for you. But I do want to bring up, I want to talk here as chair, and I think I'm allowed to do this, do this, is um, I have a lot of respect for, for Tracy. I've talked to her outside of these meetings, and um, she makes a lot of sense. I don't know if all of you get along with Tracy or not. I don't really care. But I, sp Thank you, Jay. But I spend a lot of hours, and I try to listen carefully to what she has to say, and she's never not made sense to me. But today I'm going to take some exception. She said that these public comment times are being taken by people with personal issues, and don't relate enough to the community at large. So I'm going to look here at what, like Judy brought up, the turnovers in property managers. To me, that's something that affects everybody. She asked if agendas could be available to anybody that wants to show up at these meetings. My answer was yes, and to me, that's something that everybody benefits from. She asked about uh, the open apartments that are still available are there still all you know the same amount of open apartments at golden court so that's something that's for the community and for the people that haven't been admitted yet so i consider that a community concern if there's too many open apartments that aren't being available to to applicants should should tenants be more aware of rent policies that was a question i think affects everybody should we come up with some clearer description of what policies are, especially regarding rent and eviction? So um, then she asked about more space for recycling, more dumpster space for recycling. That's a community issue. And um, what would be lost if we spent money on an audit? So Tracy, I guess I'm looking at you. To me, these, these are all community issues that Judy brought up today. I do feel like there's been issues in the past that some of the issues were presented in a very personal way and the board responded in a personal way. 
So I appreciate you reminding all of us that when we bring up topics at these commissioner meetings, they really should be community topics. And Judy, I think you did a good job today bringing up issues that affect the whole community. But Tracy, I don't want you to be shy about talking to the commissioners. You've been great so far. I, I support your your concern. Okay. So I wanted to get that off my chest. Okay? I think your issues were fair today and all that. And um, if I'm going to be chair longer, even for one more meeting, I'd like all of us to keep our voices at a polite level and to show each other that we're adults and know how to work out problems as adults and not need to raise our voices and get contentious. I mean, there are contentious issues, so I may be uh, dreaming. But let's work hard, keeping our voice level down, keeping our comments short, our questions short. And, you know, this is like a two-hour meeting today. So um, I think we can do better than that. Two and a half. So I apologize. That means your leader. Yeah, that means your leadership at today's meeting wasn't good enough. So if I'm a leader again, I hope to work on that. All right. What's that? What's that? Next meeting. Next meeting. The date of the next meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry. What works? What should the next meeting be? Pamela, I'm going to look at you. Yeah. I'm retired. I don't keep a calendar anymore. What would be a good date for... Uh, Tuesday Tuesday last, Tuesday. Tuesday of the month. last Tuesday of the month. And that would be the same day as the discussion about the annual 27th? Mm -hmm. 27th? So, so we're going to set the next meeting for 27th, and we're going to, uh, it's going to be uh, probably a two hour meeting. We better... What time is the annual plan? So the annual plan meeting is at 11 a.m. on the 27th. So you could do it beforehand, or you could do it afterwards, depending on everybody's schedule. I want to do it after. Uh, I'd like to do it afterwards, so if anything comes up during the presentation or the plan, we can talk about it while it's still fresh in our minds. That does that does mean, I hope that works for the staff. So I'm saying that I'd like the commissioners to meet after the annual plan presentation. We need a lunch break then. What's that? We'll need a lunch break then if we have an annual plan. Can you guys bring in lunch for everybody, please? You don't have to. PBTA, PBTA used to give. dollars we lost for a late PR. No. So, no, no. No lunches. Okay. He wanted to speak with you. He said meetings, your garage of free is full on Tuesday or the. That would be great. I'll try to set it up. Well, by regular means, regardless of the annual plan. Do we want to do it on a different day? No. Okay. So we're going to meet. How long generally is the annual plan? What do you need? An hour? About an hour and a half. Just depending on depending on com on comments or questions. So if we met it, could we meet at ten, and then after the hour and a half? Short break, and then our meeting could start like 11 30, 11 40. Annual no, you, so the annual plan scheduled at 11. So you're saying move the annual plan? If it could be moved up to 10, yeah. then our meeting would. Well, I'm understanding our meeting is to follow the annual plan. Yeah. I like that idea. If the annual plan is at 11, it's not going to get done any earlier than 12 30. Right. Can okay, we do the annual plan a little earlier? So, what by law here. By law, we're required to post the meeting 48 days in advance. Uh, 48 days. All right, days. so you have to leave it at 11. Yeah, That's fortunately. Fine. That's 48 days. We've already been it's, over. it's already been scheduled at a certain okay. time, and okay. it's publicized. Right, it's on web pages. Okay. It's all over. Yeah, that's fine. All right. All right. You could make the other meeting later. You could and make we, the other meeting at one a instead. Different day, too. If you, if you are all available a different day, we could do it, you know, on a Wednesday or Thursday. You mean a couple days after the... Well, why don't we meet the very next day, a Wednesday, at our 11 a.m., and that way we'll have gone right. through the annual plan on the 27th, and on the Wednesday, okay. the 28th. Does okay. that sound okay, Sue? So we're going to meet on Wednesday, the 28th, at 11. Right. Pam, okay? you got that? Um, Can you the one? Does that make sense, Simon? Does that work wait, for you? Wait, wait, wait. I'm actually in Maine for a conference. Oh, okay. Um, even, the uh, even on the 27th. Oh. Could, it, can we do Thursday, the 29th? Are you not going to be here for the yeah. annual plan? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Virtually. Okay, so Thursday, the 29th? Oh, yeah. Okay. On the 29th, yeah. Thursday, the 29th, then, will be the next meeting. Our regular. At 11. Our regular. Right. Yeah. 
Oh, okay, but we do, it would have to be a quick collective because we have an AHA board meeting at one, but we should be done by then. Okay. Yeah, we so have June 29th, a regular meeting Thursday at 11. Yes. That's Good. Why Thursday? Was it Tuesday? Tuesday is going to be the annual Tuesday's plan. Tuesday is the annual plan. I'll entertain a motion to you adjourn. You don't think we're going to make, make that? I move that we adjourn. Second. Oh, oh, so there is just, a, uh -huh. so there is a, um, the Amherst board meeting is at one o'clock on the 29th. But so if we can have a, sh we, we don't typically have two hour meetings. Yes. This is unusual. Um, if we could do a quick meeting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we can promise you to get out of here. Or yeah. meet at meet meet at ten. Meet at ten. Ten works for me. So sorry, this ten o'clock on Thursday. Ten o'clock on the twenty ninth. No, it's better. Okay. Yeah. All right, ten a.m. on the twenty ninth, Thursday the twenty ninth. I hope so. All right. Anything else, guys? Public? Anything else? Now, believe me, everybody who spoke today from the public, we hear you. And, uh, <laughs> no, that's okay. Motion to adjourn. And so moved. Second, all Second. All right. We are.